he's the best ever welcome to another edition of everyone hates cleveland the podcast today we are going to be talking about the cleveland indians and if i don't sound excited mike it's because i'm it's not that i don't like yonder alonzo it's that we're missing carlos santana so let us I missed my lead. We didn't sing I Will Remember You. I, I just will remember <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So if I, anyone can't see me, I'm, I'm pouring one out in my den for Carlos <laughs> Santana. Oh, man. I, you know, our lead in could be about beer, it could be about, you know, all the wonderful places at Ohio City. But we got to talk a little bit about Carlos Santana before we talk about our f- favorite first baseman this year. Well, I guess we are going to talk about our favorite first baseman this year. Mike, why did they sign Carlos? You know, I guess I understand the money. Brantley costs money. Gomes costs money. Kipnis costs money. I will say one thing that has most pissed me off about this is just like the dumping on Santana on the way out of town. Like Francona has talked about a prickly personality with him, which is just <laughs> totally untrue. Alomar, like the same thing, talked about how he was like a light of the clubhouse and a comedian who made everybody comfortable. So first of all, screw you, Terry Francona, for taking a shit on Santana on his way out the door. That is just so unprofessional. Second of all, I haven't appreciated certain authors of the Cleveland Plain Dealer who cannot <laughs> name who have done similar actions of saying, of cr- criticizing how he'll be able to handle the Philadelphia media when, like, Hamilton and the plane dealer have wrapped on him for five years. So, yeah. You know what? We love you, Carlos. You deserve better. This isn't Boston. This isn't New York. This isn't okay. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know how to follow that up. <laughs> I, I don't know how to follow that up, so I'll just leave it there. Um, I don't know. My biggest curiosity about Carlos Santana has always been the clubhouse because he has always been um, as bad as affable a person as you could ever want. Uh, the fun part of this is you get to hear how, um, you know, Jason Kipnis is the leader in the clubhouse and Michael Brantley is the leader in the clubhouse. But um, it seems to me over the years, the glue of the team has been um, – the steadiest offensive player, a uh, guy who will position himself wherever it takes to make the team better, uh, including left field and third base, uh, right field as well, uh, and became an above average to great first baseman in his last year here. And, you know, now he's no longer an Indian, so we can't, I guess next year we'll have to do the Philadelphia Phillies positional previews for some podcast in Philly. You so, know, Kipnis is a, if you're like at all, in step or in touch with this organization, you know that Kipnis runs his mouth all the time to the point that like, he's not a huge inspiration to this locker room. And you also know that Brantley and Kluber are both so quiet that the Indians have had huge issues when they struggle with leadership roles. When those guys are at the head of the team. Now, thankfully there are new stars or different guys and they have massive chips on their shoulders and they're like both 24 and 25 years old. Mm-hmm. We all know who they are. Yeah. But I mean, seriously, I not okay with all right, let's move on. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> I like when I get Mike fired up about the things that I care about most on a baseball team. It makes me happy. You know what? It is one last time. This guy tried to learn third base to make the Indians better. <laughs> he tried to learn he learned first base and became a gold glove candidate at it to make the Indians better. He played catcher for multiple years. He then, in the World Series, went and played an outfield position so they could get his bat in the lineup to make them better. And someone talks about, like, a prickly personality. Are you effing kidding me? What the hell? This guy is the best Indian I have watched in terms of, like, busting his ass to make the team better and sullying his entire reputation because he went and signed a very affordable deal with Philly. Screw off. I don't care anymore. Is this where I should mention how much they offered him? Three and 36. What an opening salve that was. (laughs) What respect they showed him. Oh, man. All right. So (laughs) our current first baseman. Gosh, this is going to be bad. 
No, I don't think so. Um, the Indians did go out and sign a guy to play first base. Um, Yonder Alonso comes over this year. They signed him to a pretty affordable deal. Uh, again, a guy, Mike, who last. Uh, we have over the years, uh, Michael Brantley actually started this, which is going to be ironic, I think, in this conversation. But um, the Indians have certainly steered kind of their their direction in signing players to um, these these smart um, guys who who will do everything they can offensively to try to change their game to to, to improve it. Um, you know, we talked about, I think one of the guys we talked about in the past doing that was Brantley, as I mentioned. Um, but we've seen guys like Lindor and guys like Jose Ramirez do the same. Um, Yonder Alonso is certainly in that curve, uh, had a big season last year. Um, definitely saw an uptick in power, um, and some other things as well. Hits, hit the ball a little harder. Uh, talk about Yonder Alonso. Uh, I know he's not Carlos Santana, uh, but there does seem to be, um, some potential there to have uh, a, a really good offensive season here in Cleveland, part one. And part two, um, his defense has been getting knocked quite a bit. And, and I'm, I know I'm kind of throwing this out of left field, but it seems to me in everything that I've read about him prior to last year that he was considered a, a really good defensive first baseman. Is it possible um, in the wake of losing Carlos Santana that we may have gotten a better player than people think? Yeah, I think we did. I I think the Phillies paid for Santana's like stable production. That doesn't mean he's going to wildly outproduce what's behind him. It's that he was a far better stability bet. The Indians are really talented and deep in some places, and they have a really good division. And they said, we can afford to make a really cheap, sort of high upside play. I mean, I think there's like a 2% chance Alonso matches or outplays Santana this year. I, I don't think it's small. I mean, this guy mashed last year in Oakland, which is a tough place to hit. There's obviously a reality where, like, they're gambling on, like, whether the fly ball changes are real, whether pitchers can make counters, whether ha Alonso can handle counters. I mean, we're going to get to see that and live it out. But he's a competent defender, I think. I think everybody thinks he's a fine defender who just had one weird UZR year that everybody's using. Um, so I think, yeah, I think he's going to be rock solid. I think he's going to be really decent. I think he's going to – he's not going to quite be Santana, but he's going to be fine for really cheap. And since the Indians apparently can't afford anything, uh, even though they have a 25% increase in ticket sales this year, I think we can, you know <laughs> – well, I think I think the Chalk most it up to he's a good fit. The the most disconcerting piece to me about Santana that you didn't hit on um, is that Santana probably the biggest asset to me regarding Santana, especially offensively. Well, everybody talked about the walks. Everybody talked about the the power or the lack of power, depending on who you talk to. That's for another day. Um, I think the people. one. <laughs> the one, the one piece about Carlos Santana that I think um, the flexibility in his uh, a, a place in the lineup. I mean, you're talking about a guy who last year was uh, hit leadoff, hit fourth, uh, hit fifth, hit sixth. Uh, this is a guy who, while um, the mouthpiece mouthpiece of the team said he complained, never really complained about where he hit in the lineup, um, and could. Because of the way he hit on both sides of the plate as a switch hitter, uh, basically the same guy, maybe with just a, a power difference, um, depending on which side of the plate he was hitting on. Um, but basically the same hitter on both sides of the plate. Uh, the one thing the Indians are going to be missing from Santana's bat at first base is that ability to hit up and down the lineup. Now, Alonso clearly um, is better against righties against lefties. But, I mean, the bonus there is that obviously the Indians face more righties than lefties as ev every team does uh but will will we see i mean is the and, and this isn't necessarily a downside so don't take this the wrong way but i think when you lose a santana and get a guy who obviously isn't going to be as good on both sides of the plate is, is it possible that we're going to see a little bit of a platoon here with somebody else perhaps the andy diaz or even an when encarnacion getting some god willing some time at first base um is it is that probably what we're going to see against lefties are we going to see um alonso hit against both sides, uh, hit against righties and lefties, or are we going to potentially see a platoon here? Yeah, I think you're right. We're going to see a platoon. Well, 
Is this the part of the show where you and I yell about how the Indians handle Yandy Diaz for 20 minutes? Because this I, feels like I, that part. Of well, the show. <laughs> I, I, I've got to, I've got to tell you, like I'm usually the guy screaming at the top of my lungs, and and I, I, I my water's gone. I don't have any beer, and having you do this is fun. I, this is fun for me. I don't get me started on Yandy Diaz because he really doesn't have anywhere to play. And last year we talked about how flexible it was going to be, and he could play third base, and he could play the outfield, and he could play first base, and he could DH. And what happened was we found out that he couldn't play third base because that's what the manager said. Oh, and he really couldn't play the outfield because that's what the manager said. And he ended up playing third base really well and then didn't play – at all in the playoffs when we saw Giovanni Urshela do really bad things. But <laughs> why talk about that? Because now we have um, Diaz again. You know, I mentioned him, but he's not really going to have any time at first base, is he? Like, we're. I'm just going to stop. So, first of all, as an evidentiary matter, we have. We have Multiple levels of minor league managers who agree Diaz is a really good third base defender. Check. We have multiple levels of minor league data. We have major league data that points to him being a good defender at third. We have check and check. Him being a decent defender in the outfield. We have internal evaluators who say the same thing. But apparently it was just too much. Whatever. Who gives a <laughs> shit? We'll move on. <laughs> but you're telling me... <sighs> The guy is perfect for this team that's carrying Alonso, Kipnis, and Brantley. First of all, Brantley's not going to be healthy, so he's perfect for this team because he's going to have to play. Second of all, they all can't really handle left-handed pitching that well anymore. Brantley certainly can. Alonso never has. Kipnis certainly has not for the last year and a half. So you have to have a guy who can play like 70 games against just left-handed pitching and pinch hit late in games. Um, I know the Indians won't want to do that with Brantley or Alonso or Kipnis because they are narcissists and you need to be that way to be productive. They're not narcissists. That was rude. You know, you just stick with your starters. But Diaz is just this like remarkable tool who can like allow the Indians to be super malleable and they're like, nah, we don't want to do that. That would be too efficient. We're going to just play Diaz at third base. Because ideally he does. He makes so much sense with Alonzo at first base. He plays 40 games at first as a platoon pairing. He plays defense really well, well there because he's a freakish athlete. He's very tall. I mean, it's a good fit. I mean, Who's, who knows if it happens? I, mean, I, mean, if, I, I don't know. If you look at Yandy Diaz, no, he plays baseball and took a guess at what position he played. I'm guessing most people would say first base. That's beside the point. Um, you cannot we'll have. The, you cannot convince me that yeah. like this is what they're going to do. I guarantee you, we're going to see games where Encarnacion plays first and Diaz DHs because they're like worried about Diaz's defense. And yeah. no, no, they are not. I don't care. I don't care if Diaz has played first like five times in his life. Edwin Encarnacion <laughs> has the mobility of a dead person. <laughs> oh. I mean, that guy should not wear a glove anymore. So, no. Put Yanni Diaz at first base. Man, one year of life has changed you so, Mike. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. I, well, you're probably – I mean, you're probably right. Uh, I, I think that um, – I think – is it – one of those things, though, I mean, when you look at the makeup of the team, again, talking about Michael Brantley, and I think most of us assumed incorrectly that Michael Brantley was going to be playing first base this year. Um, if since they picked up that option, um, I mean, with makeup of the team, it's probably pretty likely that we, we have a hole in left field, but, uh, what happens in this scenario? What happens in the scenario in which Michael Brantley can't play left field, but isn't hurt enough not to play? Does he play first? I don't know, Jim. <laughs> Bench bat, I, I, man. Bench bat. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know what I, it is. <laughs> I cannot wait to get to left field. I mean, if there is a way for me to podcast every position to left field today just to talk about left field, I would do so. But I digress. All right. Let's talk about Yonder Alonso. Let's go back there. Um, I, I cannot believe he's going to be the least fun of the conversation today. Um, what do you see him doing uh, in Cleveland? Like, what do you, what, I mean, we saw the power pickup last year. 
Uh, obviously, I think the the stadium suits him a little better here in Cleveland. Um, you know, if we take that park factor into effect, uh, we saw the power launch up last year. Uh, is that the, uh, what are your bets here that it's going to be consistent? Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think Alonzo was like a really good gamble, and I think there's like I would say there's like a seventy percent chance he hits twenty home runs, and has a three fifty OBP, and that's basically ninety percent of Carlos Santana. Um, for way less, but there's also a, I'm sorry, I think there's a fifty percent chance that happens. There's also a decent chance, you know, he hit, you know, he's like a three thirty OBP, and he hits fourteen home runs, and we're really pissed. <laughs> Um, and is he the lock and loaded number five guy uh, when you when when they're facing off against right-handed pitching? I would think so. What is the line? So you go, you go. Are we going Frankie one? What are yeah, we going here? I mean that's that's. I'm I'm assuming Frankie one since that's the way that they were shifting at the end of last year. So you go Frankie one. I guess the two hole is I. So let's Kipnis two. Well, until he gets punted. Well, but wait, but wait. What about Brantley? I mean, are we gonna are we gonna are we gonna see a scenario <laughs> where we have Lindor one, Brantley three, <laughs> and Carnacion four? Where's Ramirez sitting? <laughs> Don't do this shit to me, Jim. <laughs> Ramirez five, Alonso six. There's your lineup. I'm gonna have to have somebody now, like, seize my phone for that lineup. <laughs> I mean, listen, I don't care what anyone says. If Michael Brantley's healthy, it, when he's healthy, he's hitting third. He's hitting third. You can't convince me that he's not hitting third. I hate and he'll get, he'll get 60 games there. I mean, he's going to hit third. And everybody, you know what's going to suck? Everybody listening to this right now, not everybody. A lot of people listening to this right now are going to be pissed off because we like Carlos Santana and are shitting on Michael Brantley right now. How the hell did they pick up that contract? Ah! I don't know, man. Look, I think Brantley can be super useful for like 80 games, but he also is now like, what, your sixth best offensive player when he, even when he's healthy? Fifth? Okay, let me – can I ask you this? Looking at the market, and of course, we can't know the market. We can't know the market on November 3rd. We're not those guys. But I'm sure, I'm sure that there are lots of front office people that knew this was going to happen. Let me ask you a question. Looking at the market, and I know this is hindsight, but give me a break. People knew this was going to happen. Look, in, Who is going to sign Michael Brantley at $12 million? Who? Who? We heard the White Sox. Are the White Sox signing him at $12 million? Who's going to sign Michael Brantley? Look at all the people still out there that are free agents. Would Michael Brantley be on a baseball team right now for $12 million? What's great is when Lorenzo Cain signs for 3 and 51 and you could have had ah! 24% of Brantley's con- of of Cain's contract from your your Brantley option. Oh, and you could have just let Chisenhall walk too. That would be 20 million, so you could have had about 40 plus percent of a Kane deal with how this market's playing. YOLO, man. YOLO. You only live once. Sign Brantley. Neil is its finest. Okay. So, was this? This was first base, right? <laughs> first base. First All base. right. <laughs> All right. So. I guess there's really not much more to say about first base. Yonder Alonso is a big gamble. Carlos Santana was not. Um, we got him at a bargain. Maybe it'll pay off. Maybe it won't. And Ed, that puts Encarnacion as a potential platoon mate to field. That would be like bringing Hafner back to play first base. But the depth is interesting. 20 seconds on depth. Yeah, we got plenty of time on depth. It's just Bobby Bradley. That's literally it. He's going to be in AAA this year. He cut his strikeouts a ton last year. He's still hitting for power. He's not a fun interview. You know, you know what was fun about him last year, though? You know what was fun about him last year? You could see, and again, talking about these IQ players, uh, you could see him developing over the year. Like you could see him working things out over the years the year progressed. And I think um, you know, the worries that we've had about a guy like um, you know, Bradley Zimmer, who has had kind of kind of pretty locked struggles over the past three seasons. Um, you could see Brantley 
a lot of things changing with Brantley, especially the eye at the plate. Um, I got to admit, after looking at the numbers this year, Mike, I, I've not been high on Bradley. I've thrown him into every single potential deal possible. He could probably be more interesting than we've been giving him credit, don't you think? Yeah, last year was really – I mean, he was young for his level. He cut his Ks by a ton. He started using the opposite field more. Um, and, and, and he's and still, he's, still he's, carried he's, elite power. Well, I mean, and, yeah, well, and he's doing this at the levels you don't generally do this at, which is really shocking to me. Because he, I mean – Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, a 21-year-old in double A, like, you don't cut your K percentage by, like, seven points and still, like, shred the ball. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, there, there, there's clearly something there. Um, I don't – I mean, are, are – is it – I mean, they pick up – I mean, is Bradley a guy that they're looking at? For later in the year, I mean, is I, I guess I never really considered that till just now. Um, are they feeling okay because they have Bradley, who's probably going to rake at Columbus? Um, are they higher on him than than we think? Maybe. I mean, I think that's really. He's an adequate. He's also like a decentish defender at first. I maybe they are, and I like I wouldn't fault them for it. He's like the first legit first base prospect since. Jim Tomey started using steroids. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, when he was at third and he suddenly gained 40 pounds when he moved to first. That's what I meant. Not steroids. Corn I didn't fed. say I didn't say that. Corn fed, man. He He's was working the farm in the winter. I know how it is. You go and dig in the farm in the winter when the, you can't grow anything. I know I know what it's like. He's I know, I know that. He's, He's corn fed, man. Um right. cow fed. <laughs> yes. All right, so I mean, I, I don't know that percentages are apt here, but um, let's have some fun. Uh, let's start with Alonso, the clear starting first baseman for the Indians. Uh, uh, percentage of game time we see from Alonso this year, Michael? I think he plays seventy five percent, eighty percent. I think probably eighty percent of games at first. I had eighty. Definitely agree with that. Um, all right, this is where we get some fun. Okay, so Encarnacion. I just can't – I can't buy <laughs> – I can't buy even 10% from this guy. I, there's no way. But go ahead. 5%. I see the 5%. I see those. Okay. Like the, we'll the interleague games where they're facing a left-handed starter, he's going to play those. All right. Brantley. Brantley. Brantley or Bradley? Brantley? Br Brantley with an N. Brantley. I have 15% left. I'll give him 5%. <laughs> yep. I'll give him five. Give him a quick five. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna shock I'm gonna shock myself. Uh, I'm gonna say zero. I'm at first. God, I, that's the dumbest thing I've ever said. I think he's gonna see more time in uh, the Cleveland Clinic this that, year. That's but, yeah. I, me. <laughs> um Diaz. <laughs> You got ten percent left. So I have, I have ten percent left. You know what? I'm taking that five percent back from Brantley. He's getting zero. You're right. You're right. I'll give Zia. I'll give Diaz ten percent, and my last five percent will go to Bradley. Because he's gonna get September time, no matter what. All right. All right. I'm gonna just ride with that because I want to give Diaz that last fifteen percent. But there's there's no doubt in my mind that Bradley's gonna see September, um, some September time and. Who knows if there's an injury um, if Alonso goes down. That's when things get really interesting. Uh, whether they make a move, put Diaz there full time. I, I don't know. Michael Martinez had to get thrown in there at some point. <laughs> wait. Now, now Harv is going to be complaining. We're going to have him in the comments section. Wait. Cool wait, down, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold cool on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't. This is serious, too. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, people. I have been paying attention, but here, I can't remember now. Was it last year? Was it the year before? I can't remember. Did they? I, this is serious, Mike. They did pick it, him up this year, right? It was. I was told, you know, it's just a minor league signing like all other minor league signings, but it is not. That is not the case. Okay. Okay. So I, I only – I'm sorry. I We're going to – if you think that Harv's the guy we have to worry about complaining – Things I think they're going to take precedence, but I don't know. You know what? Second base is next. I mean, there's 
There's no drama at second base, right? It's going to lead to Brantley somehow. I can tell you that. I can guarantee you that. We will sound off on Brantley. We have themes. This is a theme show. <laughs> Last year, it was Michael Martinez. This year, it's the Michael Brantley option. You know, when Michael Brantley hits 330 in 150 games with 20 dongs. Jim and I will just stop podcast. That's it. That's it. Done. It's possible. Is it possible that Michael Brantley is that flex guy we've been looking for all along? Something to ponder for the next podcast. <laughs> I will <laughs> not ponder that. I refuse. All right. Well, the next time you hear us, we'll be talking about second base. I think that means Jason Kipnis salary somewhere. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Baltimore? I don't know. Columbus? <laughs> I don't know. All right.